like um, I, last I saw you was in uh, 2016, like um, six years ago, right? In uh, Valencia. In Valencia? Yeah, you know, the, the competition ah. in the jury. Yeah. yeah, I remember now. Mm, yeah. Time is fine. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, time flies. But uh, actually, but that was my first uh, competition to judge. But it was very interesting because I remember that uh, we all we had the same kind of, uh, of opinion for the the winners and you know, the result. And it was very interesting because when I was uh, writing, oh, he's a very good pianist. The other jury was saying, no, he's like not very good. Really depends on the jury, right? Yes, the I'm always very uh, careful with competitions. Mm. Yeah, because you also you you do the jury very often. Uh, like you 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 on the jury for a lot of competition, right? Yeah, quite often. Then uh, I'm going to uh, well, the Hong Kong competition is now taking place in Vienna, uh, in Austria, oh. because of the Hong Kong problem. Now. So um, now yesterday I was listening to a lot of your YouTube, which was very enjoyable. And yeah. I had, I especially like that when you're playing the Sati Gymnopesi, the Sati, and also the Ravel Sonatine. That was actually my favorite, the first movement. Because I feel, yeah. um, especially what I like so much about your Sonatine the, is like the, between the notes, it, there's always like a very big space, but very warm space between the notes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, so it was. Yeah. I really like to know because you, especially especially for the French composers, the difference between Ravel and the Debussy's sonority. Oh, okay. Uh, I think Ravel is more linked with classical repertoire. I mean, he was often referenced with Rameau, with uh, Couperin, oh. you know, that kind of classical French writing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sonatine, mm -hmm. for instance, it's a very classical form, three movements. Uh, and so Ravel was more attached to a certain uh, classicist tradition. In, uh, mm -hmm. Ravel was not a revolutionary composer. Uh, mm -hmm. he, didn't really, he didn't break any rules. He didn't really mm -hmm. uh, invent New harmonies. Mm. It was mm. just Ravel, but the mm. was. He really was a, a, a revolutionary composer. I mean, he mm. opened doors to uh, contemporary music. I mean, a lot of composers mm. uh, uh, take the Bussy as the, mm. the creator of a new era. Uh, so mm. the, the, it means that the sound of Ravel is more traditional, more classical, and the sound of the Debussy mm -hmm. is linked to many new sonorities, like uh, with the new pedal, uh, new approach to the keyboard, it's more impressionistic. If you want to compare with a visual uh, effect, think of the French painters as Watteau or Corot, mm -hmm. and now think of the new ones like Monet, like Pissarro, like, you know, the impressionists. And if you have to choose between Ravel and Debussy, which do you prefer? Or is it, is it too difficult a question? Oh, I can't do that. Because maybe mm -hmm. what I can say is I was first in love with Ravel when I was a kid. That was really my first. I, I remember being in love with Ravel's music when I was, I don't know, seven, eight, or I was really very early. I discovered Debussy later. And uh, why, I don't know, it was just a personal uh, attraction. Uh, you know, if you put a gun on my head and say you have to choose between Ravel and Debussy, I would say Ravel. But, uh, uh. but that's all. I know, you know, I remember a conversation with my harmony teacher at the conservatory, mm. and I was saying to him my love to, of Ravel and uh, exposing all my passions and we were talking about mm. French music and, and like you, you were mentioning the comparison between Ravel and Debussy and I was saying Ravel, mm. Ravel, Ravel and he said, well, you will discover later that Debussy is more important. Mm. At the time, I, I couldn't really understand, but now I understand. 
You know, that's what I was saying before. Mm -hmm. Rather, Debussy opened a new era. Ravel was not. Yeah, and uh, if you have to choose for each composer your favorite piano piece for Ravel and uh, Debussy, which piece would you choose? That's also very difficult, but there are so many. Uh, I love the Sonatine. For me, it's, uh, uh -huh. I think it's such a short piece and uh, it's supposed to be Sonatine, which means little sonat. Um, mm -hmm. it's, but all Ravel is there. And, uh, and there, there is another piece I love, and it's a four hands piece, it's Mamialoa. Monegus, Monegus, Mamialoa. And again, it's a simple piece, but it's all Ravel. Uh, Ravel had that ability to create his own world with only a few notes. I mean, if you think of the, the beginning of Mother Goose, you know, the, the very first opening, I can play for you, just to show you that. Okay. You know, if I play... It's so simple, only a few oh. notes, but it's Ravel. You know it's Ravel. So I think that's, that's a magic thing that a composer can express himself, reveal himself only with, with a few notes. So that, that, I think it's, it's really peculiar. Actually, my favorite piece of the record is that the Menuet or Haydn. That's simple, but actually, I love that harmony. Yeah, but uh, uh, if I really have to choose one piece by Ravel in the whole repertoire, that would not be a piano. Mm. That would not be a piano piece. It would be. Oh, which one? It's opera, L'Enfant et les Sortilèges. You know, the, it's he, he's done two operas, uh, short operas, L'Enfant et Espagnol yeah. and L'Enfant et les Sortilèges. And for me, L'Enfant et les Sortilèges uh, is really the, the, the maximum of Ravel. And uh, it's magic. And Ravel was very mm. fond of magic. So that, that would be my favorite piece. So as Debussy is concerned, uh, if I have to choose a piano piece, uh -huh. it would be among the preludes. Uh, that's difficult. Oh, preludes? One, oh. one of the Which preludes. Prelude? Which one? Oh. Uh, hmm. That was the voile sales. You know, voile is not oh. the second of the book one preludes. Uh -huh. The one that, the, yeah, yeah. that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but maybe I'm influenced by the fact it's the first prelude I played when I was nine years old. Um, uh, but it's a mysterious. I like the mystery of that prelude mm. because in French, mm -hmm. in French, it's called voile. But mm -hmm. voile has two meanings. It can mean either sails on a boat or it can mean veils on a window. It's the same word. Uh, and nobody knows which one the BC was thinking of. So uh, I like that mystery, which one? <laughs> so it's very interesting because the mystery is something you can't see or you can't hear. That's why when I heard your sonatine, the all the between notes, this space I can't see, but there's such attractiveness when you play these notes. So it's like something I can't see, but there's a magic inside between the notes. Just what yeah. it's, you know? But I think the, the, the real mystery of French music is behind the notes. Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. also typical of Debussy. Sometimes he writes uh, a lot of notes just to create the wind or the water. Or mm. the, the, mm -hmm. Behind the notes, you have to create that. It's not written. Mm. Uh, if you play exactly the notes and nothing else, you won't hear the wind and you won't see the water. Mm. So it's all mm -hmm. about the interpretation and the, the, the sound that you create with your instrument that makes your imagination, your imagination, mm. seeing other things than just the notes. And you know that I heard also a lot of your interviews and of course I, you told me about this episode. The most interesting thing is when you're meeting with Julius Ketchum, your teacher. Oh. I heard the, this teacher was introduced by was a cleaning lady of your parents. 
That's right. So how 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 did it happen? Who who was she? <laughs> well, she was a very interesting person. Because uh, uh, yeah. when my grandparents moved to another apartment in Paris when I was born, at the yeah. time I was born. Oh. Uh, Your grandparents? Yes, my grandparents and my mother. Yeah. We, they lived together. And uh, yeah. they moved to another flat in Paris, and in that flat at the time, there was what we has disappeared now, but there was room at the last floor, at the last floor of the house, there was room for the maids, you know, for the, the cleaning person. They had a special little room yeah, yeah. at the top, you know. Yeah. So when my grandparents mm -hmm. arrived there, there was that lady who had been there with another owner and she used to work for him mm. and she asked my grandparents can i stay do you, do you accept that i will stay mm. in my room and I, in exchange i will work for you as a cleaning person and uh, of course my, oh. my grandparents said yes yes of course why not and she'd been there for many years and uh, yeah. she couldn't write she couldn't read he was a very simple person uh -huh from the countryside, uh, and she had yeah. always been a cleaning person, she, she had no education, yeah. but she was very mm. full of heart, very, very, very generous, yeah. uh, a very, very uh, nice person. So she saw, yeah. she saw me for the first time when I was born, I mean, I was only a few weeks when I arrived there. So she was, for me, she was part of the family, because uh, yeah, yeah. he's always there to clean, to cook, to help. So many years later, uh, when I was 15, uh, with my parents, with my mother, we used to go to holiday during the summertime. Mm -hmm. And we went all away from two, three months for the holidays, summer holidays. Mm -hmm. And during that time, that cleaning lady, her name was Gabrielle. She couldn't, Gabriel, yeah. she couldn't stand to stay without working. So oh, I see. She, she was looking for temporary work while we were away. Uh -huh. and yeah. one, one summer we came back and she said to me, oh, interesting. Uh, the person I worked during the summer is American. Yeah and he's uh, working at the American Embassy in Paris and he likes music oh. so oh. I told him about you because you know of course I was already at the conservatory and I was playing the piano oh. and she knew about me of course. Uh -huh. and for her I was like Mozart, you know, a genius yeah, 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 yeah. so she mentioned me to that person and she said yeah. well he's very interested and he would like to listen to you yeah. And as a you know, stupid young boy I was at that time, I said, no, I don't want to play for anyone. Why should I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And my mother was very kind. She said, well, why don't you do that for her? She's such a nice person. Mm. He wants to listen to you. It's no matter. So, mm. okay, I said, okay, I will do it. So he came for a coffee and I played a little, very little. Because I wasn't really yeah. keen on playing, and he said, "Well, that's very interesting. You seem very, very gifted. Um, if you are interested, I know a pianist that could maybe help you or be." Oh. And I said again, as a bad boy, I said, "No, I'm not. I'm not interested. I have my own teacher. I don't need anyone else." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he, insi <laughs> he insisted a little. I said, "Well, perhaps you should." Consider because his name is Julius Ketchen. Well, of course, at that time he was one of the, the most famous pianists in the world. And he said yeah. to me, uh, if you want, Julius Ketchen is playing tomorrow in Paris. I will take you and I will introduce you. And you went? And of course. Of course I went and uh, he knew already because when Ketchen saw me, ah, oh, you're the one that's okay, come and play for me. You know the... So how old was at that time? I was 15. And Julius Ketchen? Ketchen was 14. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, what did you play for him? 
So I planned what I was, it was in May 66, and that was the year of my exam in the Paris Conservatory for the final exam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I planned the pieces I was going to play for that competition, which was the Chopin Ballad number four, and, uh, uh. and the Tombeau de Couperin by Ravel. And uh, the competition was a few weeks later. And, yes. And he, Kachen told me, please let me know how it goes. No, I, of course he was traveling all over, but he said, I want to know the result of the competition. So yeah. I won that competition, I had the first prize, and uh, I told Gachet, yes, I had the first prize. Uh, and he asked me, do you think that what I told you was helpful? I said, yes, oh. very. So let's continue. <laughs> Did he? So you did you speak French with him or English? He, he spoke perfect French. Oh really? Uh, he spoke six languages currently. So this lady is very like a very such a key person in your life in this, uh, right? You know what her family name was? No. Chopin. Ah, oh, Chopin. She was okay. French. Yes, absolutely. She was called the uh, uh, Gabriel Chopin, but uh, do you, oh. you know that the Chopin's father was French, so uh, there's a connection. Yeah, what an interest! That's the most impressive story, really. It's like an angel, a special saint for you, right? Yes, uh, and yeah. from Cachel, I had uh, my first recital. He organized my first recital in Paris. My first recital in London, and also especially he introduced me to Deca, uh, the record company. So that that was really the, the the birth of my career. I don't know. I cannot imagine what would have been my career without him. Would have it probably happened, but totally different. And also, I, I understand your mother was an organist, right? Yes, of course. My first teacher. Yeah, did he also give you lesson, piano lesson, keyboard lesson. Your mother. She was my first teacher. I started the piano yeah. with her because uh, when I was three years old, uh, there were, of course, two pianos in my home. So I started yeah. to do a on the piano, like every child. And my mother said, well, no, no put your fingers. She, she just gave me a few lessons. And she saw that I was so interested and apparently gifted. So she was my only teacher until the age of nine. So it's uh, oh. six years. And my basic technique is yeah. She started with piano. Your mother played the organ in the like the organ also. Did she play organ and also cembalo both? And uh, she wanted to be a pianist, but because of the war, uh, she couldn't enter the piano class at the conservatory because she was too old. Mm -hmm. So she decided to go to organ because the age limit was higher. So I that's see. how she became an organist. Mm -hmm. And she was she had a, a church in Paris. She was uh, the main, yeah. uh, main organist in the church in Paris. And mm -hmm. uh, I heard organ all my life. I and mean, then uh, I tried a little bit. Yeah, because I mean, all the great composers like uh, Beethoven, Divorce, they all played organ in the church and they I think they played well and also they improvised the organ, right? Those of composers, great composers, so. Forêt was a great organist and Saint-Saëns was a great organist. So yeah. It's a very... And my father, my grandfather was a violinist. So oh. I, I also played the violin for seven years. But, uh... Your mother's father or your father's father? No, my mother's father. Yes, oh, I see. Yes. It's all a musician family. Yeah, it's a th I'm the third generation of uh, musician in the family. So, oh, your mother must be made a really big influence on your musical career, right? Oh, yeah. Of course, because the first six years, I mean, are so important. Julius Ketchum, he was such a great pianist. So maybe did he give you such a... Um, was he a special teacher? Because he's such a being a great performer. Maybe he gave a big advice or something magical in his teaching, like he's playing. Yes, yes, he was very important for me because he had another vision of music making because he was performing, you know, and the difference yeah. between my teacher, they, they used to perform a long, long time ago. 
So I mm -hmm. never heard them play. But here I, I could go to his concerts and the next day have a lesson. So it was a much more uh, interacting teaching. Uh, he, he would really give me advices on how to perform on stage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So did he perform in front of you in in lesson? Like he played a lot no. to show. No, no, never. never. No, no. Oh. Uh, I asked. Uh, I asked him why because I wanted to, yeah. to see him. So I said no, oh. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to play like me. You're supposed to play like you. So if I play, oh. you're going to imitate what I do, and that's not what I want. I want you to be yourself. So he played very little oh. on purpose because uh, he wanted me to. Oh, that, that's a very interesting. Mm. So he made you imagine, he made you create your. So he was giving me advices, he was giving me ideas, but that was, I had to realize them. Yeah, but maybe talking about um, when you're out of a concert, uh, do you have any special hobby or something you like to do? Oh, yes, I, I used to play tennis a lot. Uh, that was my passion. Oh. Yeah, when I was young, uh, I played a lot of tennis. Oh. So, uh, and then, well, I, I always had passion for literature, paintings, um, food, and, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, animals. <laughs> so, uh, oh, do you cook also? Yes, a lot. I love cooking. Oh, I what kind it. of cuisine do you cook? Well, uh, I am a vegan, so I cook a lot of. Uh, anything vegetables, tofu, and uh, all that. Uh, and uh, I love that because it's very creative. I love, I love nature, I love plants, I don't know, so, uh, so I have a little garden yeah. too. So, no, it, it was my mother's house. And when uh, she passed away two years ago, and I decided to move here, I, I really feel uh, settled in a way. I used to, uh -huh. of course, I travel less than before because of the, the, the pandemic problems and also because I think that you know, 50 years of career is a good good number and now I, mm -hmm. I want to slow down a little and, uh, and now I teach in Paris uh, at the Ecole Normale. There are some Japanese students? Yes, uh -huh. yeah, absolutely. I have, uh, uh, a special, you know, Ecole Normale was created by Alfred Cortot, the great uh, French yeah, 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 yeah. And every year there is a one Cortot Prize. Uh, oh. And uh, it's uh, it's one of my students, Japanese students, that won it. So I'm very proud. Oh. Really. Yeah, they are lucky because you are like oh, Julius Ketchum, you know, the great performer who is also teaching now. So. I think that students are very lucky, especially to learn such a French repertoire with you. Yes, I think I, I think it's important to to give yeah. them, you know, after all the experience I have, um, to give them some yeah, advices, ideas about uh, French music and other music, but mainly French. When I do master classes, I always mention that I prefer uh, French repertoire, not because it's my repertoire, but because. I believe I'm more useful for them than mm. uh, in any other repertoire because I have that long experience and uh, my teachers and all so on. So, uh, what kind of repertoire are you working? Any anything you, new repertoire you like to perform or is there anything? I still think that French repertoire is my language, so I, yeah. I, I'm going to yeah, yeah. really stick with that because it's. It's me, you know. I always say that yes. uh, you can always learn foreign languages, but you you have a mother tongue, and that would be always yes, your that... mother tongue. And my mother tongue is, yeah. is French music. So, uh, mm -hmm. But recent, recently, I did a recording a CD. I recorded a CD that's very unusual in the repertoire oh. because it's going to be uh, twenty-four different composers. But all, all, I think all, only five or six are French. All the others are Scarlatti, Rachmaninoff, Scriabin, um, Enesco. So interesting. Yeah, so and in the end, any message for this Japanese um, pianist who is reading this magazine and who will be coming to your concert, please give us the message. 
Well, come and share the love of music with me, the love of French music, because my programs are going to be only French. And I think for me, it's a journey. You know, I always ask my audiences not to clap between the pieces. I think it's very important mm. for me because I want them to to dream with me. You know, I want them to go away and forget about it. Doesn't matter, you know, if it's Forêt or if it's Sati or if it's Poulin. Just go to mm. another world and dream with me. That's well, that's what I would like to to say. Close your eyes mm. and go to. Uh, another world. <laughs> yes, so I just really just feel that, that such an importance in the silence. The, in the silence, there's the beauty, there's the mystery in the new world. Yes, absolutely. So that's why I think uh, mm. it needs to have a continuity. Uh, it's like if you dream, you don't want to be awakened by some noise or something. Mm. And uh, I just want to share emotions that I feel with my music with other people. And I want them to, to be happy, to dream, to, to be somewhere else, to forget about their problems, their worries. And, uh, yeah, that's what I wish them. Emotion also, it's something you can't see, but it's, it's a, there's a lot of weight. Those emotion could be very heavy and very warm, but everything is there in the mystery where you can't see. But your message is very, I think it's, it's a very, very important, especially at this, after this Corona. It's uh, most important thing is uh, this silence, but what you have, what you feel inside, you can see, but there's love, there's, you know, a lot of things inside. Uh, I agree with you. It's, uh, it's all about love. Uh, so. <laughs> Yes. Thank you for your time. So, yeah, thank you very much. So please take care and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.